Hey guys, Wade here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look at a new scope and kind of a little check-in on the old CZ uh, Alpha here. So Vortex recently announced some new scopes in the Vortex Viper HD line. A 2 to 10, a 3 to 15, and a 5 to 25. Now what we see here is the new 2 to 10. I'm going to cover a few specs. I have spent some time behind this. I've had it for about a month now. I have spent some time behind it. I do thoroughly like the scope, but there's also cons. There's a, it really is cons with literally everything. So we'll talk about, we'll get into all that. So at its core, it's a two to 10, which is the power range, two to 10 X by 42. That's the, remember in our last video, the 42 millimeter objective. This is a 30 millimeter main tube. It is uh, coming in under, uh, I think right around 20 ounces. And we're looking at about right at 12 inches long. So. All in all, pretty on par with the uh, most two to tens, and it's a pretty good, good little compact, lightweight hunting scope. This does have a illuminated dot in the center of the reticle. That said, it does not have parallax adjustment. The parallax is set at the factory at, I believe, 100 yards. We do have our fast focus eyepiece, a nice zoom lever, and the turrets are capped. Now, underneath the cap turrets, you do have adjustable not necessarily target turrets, but pseudo target style turrets. But uh, the thing I like the most about those turrets is the fact that you, to reset to zero, there is no zero stop. You don't really need it in this scenario. To reset to zero, you just lift them up, turn them where they need to be and set them back down. Super easy, super nice way of doing a, a good hunting line scope. Now, you have to think about the options of these these this particular line of scopes is these are like good hunting scopes. These aren't target scopes, although you could use it in that role if you so choose. And then that's that literally the first thing I said to uh, the guys at Vortex when I got this one in hand is, where's my first focal plane version with a parallax adjustment for the tactical boys? And they just kind of laughed and I don't know what that means. <laughs> so moving on from there, uh, we covered the turrets and everything else. Let's talk about the reticle. This is what's known as their dead hold BDC MOA reticle. Now, just jump over on the website to check that out. Like, it's a very simplistic reticle with a few BDC hash marks. Now, keep in mind, like, this scope isn't meant for long range. It's meant for hunting, but it gives you some ability to make some longer range shots. So, from a simplicity standpoint, it is a BDC, the BDC style reticle graduated in two MOA hash marks for the wind, which is more than a, adequate for this particular optic. And it's graduated in uh, 1.5, 4.5, and 7.5 in the uh, lower stadia hash marks for your holdovers. As it pertains to that, I mean, don't sweat the small stuff. Like this scope is primarily going to be used within a your um, your rifle's um, zero range. But if you so choose to stretch it out, the best thing you can do for any type of BDC style reticle is just take it to the range and figure out where that lines up with your cartridge. And you know, it, that's the best way to do just about anything nowadays is just go confirm your data on the range. You know, that being said, let's move on. Again, the illumination is a simple push dot, push button on the opposite my side over here where the parallax adjustment normally is. And again, that center dot in the middle lights up. Now that is pretty favored amongst a lot of predator hunters out there. Uh, and that's where I kind of see this particular scope and the 315 uh, living in that uh, area, meaning like this is a good contender to the VX5 and VX6 line of Leopold scopes that their second focal plane, they have a center dot illumination and they're perfect for predator hunting or whitetail hunting out of a deer stand, anything of that nature. So kudos to Vortex updating this line of scopes, the Vortex Vipers. Uh, I'm very impressed with this two to 10. I'm very impressed with the three to 15. And I'm probably gonna go ahead and grab, they make a five to 25 now and they have a second focal plane version as well as a first focal plane version. I'm definitely gonna go ahead and grab that five to 25 at a later date and check it out, the first focal plane version. So, you know, that's typically how I, I handle most any situation with optics is when a new line of optics drops, I will go ahead and grab at least one. In this particular scenario, I've got two of them. And I'll test it out, and if it kind of tests, like goes through my, uh, gets my seal of approval, I'll go ahead and buy a couple more to really test it thoroughly. Now, 
all in all, like low light performance is there for me, especially at the MSRP. Uh, you know, go look on Vortex's website at the MSRP on these scopes. These are going to be less than the VX5 and VX6 line from Leopold. But keep in mind, the MSRP on the website is typically sometimes a couple hundred, if not more dollars more expensive than what you actually see on the streets. But again, these are available at the time of this video. We're gonna run a little bit behind, but uh, you know, also give me more time to spend some time behind these scopes. So to my cons, and I really, you know, if I'm being very critical to this situation, I really can only come up with one, and that is it did not come with a throw lever. <laughs> you know, I know that doesn't really line up with, you know, what these scopes are made for and all that stuff. and. Vortex does a really good job at adding stuff like throw levers and what have you into their packages, but for some reason they left it out on this. You know, this would be a uh, this would be a uh, public service announcement to all optics manufacturers. Just give us the throw levers. That's pretty much that's pretty much where I'm going to end it on that. A uh, quick little update on the CZ two two four Valkyrie project. Now, if you recall, I kind of left it up to you guys what we should do next to it and. Overwhelming majority of people voted to cut the barrel off. So this is now cut down to a 16 inch barrel. As you can tell, we're running our diligent defense uh, wolf hunter there. It still shoots fantastic. And then, then, you know, that's the common occurring question I get about cutting barrels down is, will they still shoot good? If you have a reputable gunsmith do the work for you, it's gonna be just fine. Now, there's another conversation to be had another day about uh, twist rates and uh, bullet weights and all that stuff, but it, at its core, if the gunsmith does the job properly, it's going to be just fine. Now, I'm going to probably try to find a chassis for this, and we'll get into that on another video about the CZ coming soon. Some of the uh, cool features about the internals of this rifle, if you will, once I find that chassis, I'm going to run and everything else. But at its core, as you see it right here, it's going to be running this 2 to 10. I'm, I'm going to find me a throw lever. I love the fact that it's a lot shorter now and it still achieves, again, this is chambered in 224 Valkyrie. If you didn't see that previous video about this, go check it out. It still achieves the perfect velocities for what this thing is gonna be great for and that is like mid range to short range predator hunting. So that's pretty much it for this video. Be sure and go check out alliedmunitions.com or if you're in Midland, go by Al Outdoors and we'll see you guys next time. I should have talked shit about the bad fight. <laughs> There's always next time.